If God knew that Satan would make him sad because Satan tricks people, why did God create Satan? The short answer is that Satan is useful to God. God could easily cast Satan and all demons into the eternal lake of fire instantly with a wave of his hand but there is a reason why he hasn't, yet. The long answer first requires some background. God has an eternal plan. That plan includes individuals whom he has called and chosen to be his elect. The elect consists of folk from every tribe, race, language and nation, who have had their sins, past, present and future, forgiven. They have believed in and received into their hearts Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, to be their Lord and Savior and who are committed to live a life worthy of His calling. Now each of these saved elect individuals must be in the world and endure to the end through trials, hardships, heartaches, pain, loss, temptations and suffering, all things that are in and of the world. But it is not all gloom, for the same elect who look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of their faith, may through various trials also experience the love of God personally, resulting in a peace and joy that only He alone can give. The same will exude the fruits of the Holy Spirit and being equipped by the Word of God are able to face and overcome all obstacles that the world may throw at them. Before humans, God created angels, spirit beings. He created them in a hierarchical order and at the very top are the archangels. Michael and Gabriel and Lucifer are three archangels that are mentioned in the Bible. But it was Lucifer who got swelled up with pride and became envious of God receiving worship, for he considered himself, for whatever reason, also worthy of worship, and he was not alone in his pride of self-importance, for many angels in heaven also sided with Lucifer and exalted him. It came to pass that there was war in heaven resulting in Lucifer and a third of all the angels being cast out of heaven onto the earth. These angels are now known as fallen angels or demons, Lucifer having been renamed, Satan. In his intense hatred towards God, Satan will do anything to hurt God and his ongoing pursuit of deceiving and damning souls to hell and hurting or deceiving God's elect is his enduring legacy. Now the world stage is set. There is good amidst evil, light amidst darkness, truth amidst lies. God's holy and faithful angels who did not rebel against him are witnesses to God's supreme mightiness and foreknowledge of all things. And although Satan is bent on destroying anything and everything that he can, with the help of demons who want him to succeed, God ultimately remains in control and is glorified whenever Satan's plans are thwarted. Both angels and humans will marvel and praise and worship God when God, in response to human prayer and praise, or prayer and fasting, can miraculously turn a seemingly hopeless situation into a blessing in disguise. After their born-again conversion, God's elect are then tested through various trials and tribulations and the way they deal with each of them molds their character, that they may in the process become more Christ-like and dependent on Him, as a gold nugget is refined through fire when the dross that separates from the pure gold is wiped away. God has made the way of salvation crystal clear to the whole world and has promised not to turn anyone away who humbly repents of their sins and calls on the name of the Lord to be saved. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The gospel message is simple yet cuts to the heart. It is offensive to those who hate the truth and love living their lives in the pursuit of pleasure, self-seeking and self-indulgences. God seeks those who are desirous of receiving His mercy and whom He knows will worship Him in spirit and in truth and who will endure to the end. Unfortunately, many do not fit that category, for the love of this life is paramount to them and therefore it will be all that they will have. No it is not Satan's luring tricks and deceptions and lies that makes God sad. For God is always in control and Satan can never outsmart God. But it is God's own redeemed elect who can make him sad, if or when they neglect to honor him daily, if or when they compromise with the lusts of the world, 
who may not always love him with all their heart and soul and mind and strength of every minute of every day that can make God sad. Yet his own unfailing love evidenced in his boundless grace and mercy and faithfulness endures forever. Satan's days are numbered and he knows it. He thought he was victorious when he deceived the Jews into crucifying their Messiah King. But little did he realize that it was God's master plan that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died to save us from our sins. He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Satan is defeated, yet he is still useful to God. When King Jesus returns to establish his kingdom on earth, he will bind Satan for 1,000 years. Then he will be loosed for a short time before being cast into the eternal lake of fire. In conclusion, choose eternal life rather than eternal death and call on the name of the Lord to be saved. Don't procrastinate, do it now. Amen.